Hi, everybody. I'm John Holwick, Vice President at Loom Systems, and I'm here with uh, Julio Calderon, uh, Product Manager for our new innovation at Keo Networks. So thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you about how to monitor your open stack. And the great part of this presentation is that I'm not going to do, not going to be doing most of the talking. Julio, my customer, who has a very large deployment of OpenStack at Keo Networks, is implementing Loom, and he's going to tell you his experience and what it solves for him. So very quickly, what Loom Systems does is AI log analysis. And the difficulty with OpenStack deployments, I'll put it in the words of one of the folks I was speaking with two days ago. In OpenStack, the number of combinations and permutations of problems is endless. So traditional monitoring does not work. You can't tell a monitoring tool to look for something in particular and then tell you when that happens. Because there's too many things that could go wrong. We as human beings can't foresee them. So we need AI to properly manage and monitor OpenStack. Loom Systems does four things. First thing we do is collect the logs from all of your components in your entire environment. It automatically structures and parses them so that the analysis can happen. Uh, when we do that, we apply artificial intelligence and machine learning to understand what normal behavior is for every component and every combination of components that need to work together for the system to operate properly. Then when something deviates, it proactively notifies you that there's a problem. It then correlates all of the things going wrong at the same time. And as a final step, we offer a resolution to you and a recommendation on what's going wrong and how to fix it. We pull that from the community and match it to the problem that you're having. So to talk about that more in context, I'd love to introduce Julio. Uh, and Julio, take it away. Great, thank you. Well, uh, first, Keo Networks, who, who are we? Uh, founded in um, uh, 2002, a while back. Uh, it's a Mexican-owned um, uh, company. It's, uh, we offer many different types of uh, services. We have uh, 30 uh, different data centers, uh, 20 plus in Mexico and the rest of Latin America and also in Spain. Um, Kio, the word Kio is Swahili and it stands for mirror. So everything in Kio is uh, it's, uh, architected in that same way. Everything is mirror, uh, dual, et cetera. Want to hit the next slide? Yeah. So Kio Networks is a group of different companies. Right? Uh, Smart is a security company. Uh, we have our own SOC. Wingo is a company uh, tailored for, uh, for uh, uh, sliding the business, your, your credit card, and buying a, uh, a cloud-based solution or a SaaS. Mas Negocio means uh, more business. It's a mid market uh, company who monitors and uh, does a lot on the application side. And Datlas is our company that does big data. We have a data scientist there. Uh, and Keo, uh, the core, uh, we do it all. It's a single one stop. Reddit is a company uh, that, uh, that we have that does uh, infrastructure, IP, uh, fiber. Yeah. So Julio, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what, what's in your environment, and what are, how are you doing your OpenStack? You know, uh, this event obviously is, is OpenStack, so this is tailored for the, uh, in that context. Uh, you know, I made a, an emphasis to say that this is one flavor. So because we have so many different data centers, and they're all tier four, we attract some of the biggest companies uh, in Latin America. So they want their own cloud. So these components, like Horizon, Nova, DHCP, Neutron, KVM, Cinder, uh, Ubuntu as the OS, uh, Ceph or Scale.io or Swift are some of the components that, that, that compose our OpenStack uh, distributions or installations that we manage. But also there's more. There's the firewalls, right? There's the switching and the routing, uh, the load balancers, either hardware or software, the antivirus platforms we, we use, and obviously backup software that, that, that we include in our different environments, right? So it's, uh, it's really tough to manage all that with people. We have right. a lot of people. Yeah, so that, and 
I can understand how that's challenging. Tell me a little bit more about what were some of the problems you were facing, what were you trying to solve? Yeah. So it's, I think as, as we progress with technology, uh, it continues to get more diverse. Uh, one of the key points here, right, it's uh, the OpenStack, you guys know it, you guys do it. It's not a turnkey. It doesn't come in a single box. You don't just turn it on and everything magically works, right? There's a lot of expertise, a lot of love that you put into it to make to making it work the way you need it to. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of um, handwork by your experts and it's, uh, it's not something that you can just you know, turn on and go. Yeah. It's uh, many different components that are distributed they need to tie together, right? Uh, detecting a single point of failure within that environment is very tough. Uh, meaning you run into an issue. Uh, we do this at, at, at Keo, right? We have our experts, and by the way, they're here. If you want to ask them a question, they're right there. <laughs> uh, but they'll get together. Right? They, they handle their own customers, their own stacks. But what do you do when you run into an issue on a Friday night and you have an SLA to the end user and it's running production, right? It's not OpenStack for play. It's OpenStack for pay, right? And they're paying for that SLA. And these guys need to handle it right away. No matter where they are, who they're, who they're hanging out with, they need to jump on a call, right? They need to resolve it. So um, what I, I've seen them do is live, you know? They call me. Yeah. And just to be nosy, I get in there, see what's going on, and I'm thinking, wow, this is over my head, right? But they solve it. Uh, it just takes a lot of manual work, a lot of hard effort. Uh, the default metrics that, that we continue to, that we deploy with is one set of uh, KPIs, uh, but then there's the ongoing learn um, lessons. So after every lesson, we have a new KPI, and then we apply that KPI to our regular monitoring tools, right? This is the handy work. Yeah. Right, so what we see is that Loom takes us above that. Right. right? Took us up from doing the KPI, identifying it through a lot of hard work and hard weekends, and uh, they discover the new KPIs, basically. Yeah. So, so I think what you're saying is that it's reducing all of the manual labor that's involved in figuring out what the problem is rather than just what, are, what all the symptoms are. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I think that's really interesting. Um, so, you know, I, I went over at the very beginning the Loom Systems does four things. I mean, what out of this list, parsing and preparing the data, correlating different issues, detecting single point of favor, of failure, and then helping you resolve it. What's been, what's been most helpful to you out of these? It's the correlation, the quick, well, this, this can, imagine if we have one person looking at uh, one environment, it's, in, it's impossible, right? So, but imagine that same person trying to look at 10 environments, yeah. right? So it's, uh, th there's no way. There's no way that a single person or two or, or even 10 can look at all the logs that are being generated, right? So then we default to our known KPIs and known monitoring tools until we need to identify a new KPI. So what Loom is, is doing is, is, uh, is helping our guys, well, one, sleep better, you know, recover their weekends, uh, <laughs> and, you know, get, uh, discover new, uh, new KPIs on the fly, right? What are the new KPIs we need to address right away? So, I, so it takes us from a reactive investigative work to a proactive and, I don't know, have more fun type of uh, environment at work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, I love that. So we're, we're giving you guys back your weekends and helping you have more fun. I mean, that's yeah. like, what other, what other products do that? That's pretty amazing. All right, yeah. cool. So um, you know, we, I, I have some samples here that uh, Julio's been nice enough to share from, sure. from his own environment. Um, I want to mention, though, that we're at the, kind of at the, the halfway mark. We're going to do a raffle at the end of this. So stay here, watch the samples. And uh, our friend Sabo has been collecting business cards. So um, we're going to raffle off an Amazon Echo. It's AI in a box. It's pretty amazing. It's not as amazing as Loom, but we're going to give away a free one at the end of this. But if you work hard at it, you can probably, or maybe easy enough, to hook up that to your Loom, right? <laughs> I think you could. I want to do that. You yeah. could hook up your loom to the That's AI right. in a box right. and tell you, sir, in whatever voice you want, you have a problem. So that sounds pretty amazing. That's right. That'll be our next presentation. Uh, yeah. So let, let's go through a couple of examples here. Here's one with Kimu authentication issue. What what, uh, what do you see based on what Loom is showing you here, and what are your what are your conclusions on this one? Well, uh, this is pretty interesting, right? Because um, 
uh, the problem. I don't know if you can expand the uh, the pointers. There you go. So yeah. at, at the entry point, you see out of many different thousands of logs that, that are going on in the background, uh, it highlights you right away to an issue that lasted for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And it told you that three different events or, or particular lines in the log that can correlate to an actual issue. And it's an authentication issue, right? Uh, and on the right side, it says, hey, insight for you. So that's the actual possible fix. Right. The cool thing about it is that uh, you know, when, when our experts look at it, they can either agree or disagree, uh, or they can even enrich that answer. They can say, well, uh, sure, but in our own stack, we do this. Right? And that will actually become a new fix for some other, uh, when we continue to grow, uh, have a junior tech actually look at it and be able to address it right away, having identified the same, the same correlation. Right? right, so how much manual configuration did you have to do and how much did you have to tell ah. Loom to be able to get this, this, uh, this incident pushed to you? So all we did is point our logs to the environment. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. that, to me, I was very skeptical. I'm always very skeptical uh, about any new, new product. So we always try it. We try to break it. And I figure, okay, let's uh, from all the clouds we, we do, because this is not the only cloud we, we, we do. We do Hyper-V, VMware, et cetera. Um, we figure, okay, let's give them the hardest one. Let's give them our, one of our OpenStack logs. And we didn't give them all. We just gave a subset of logs that we could share on, based on lab uh, equipment. So we, we shut that, those logs to it. Right? And this is what it, uh, uh, a day uh, after ingesting the logs, that's what it, what it gave us. That's one of the events. It gave us many, many events. Yeah. So I think that this is one of the things why Julio and, and Keo are such a good partner for us. I didn't know that he was giving us his hardest problem to solve. But that also introduced us to OpenStack, mm -hmm. because OpenStack and the problems that everybody faces in OpenStack are what we built this product to solve. So thank you for giving us hard problems. No, my uh, pleasure. Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about a, another one here. This one's with Nova. And, it, and there's some inconsistency between databases. Yeah. So th this was interesting. Um, um, yeah, this is, I didn't expect to see this, actually, but there was a mismatch on uh, the number of VMs uh, that were actually deployed versus the number of uh, VMs in the database, right? Uh, and this happened to, to, to be running for 34 minutes. So in this case, it, it told us right away what is the recommendation, right? First, it identified there was a mismatch, and second, what you should do about it. So one, it told us what we didn't know right away. Eventually, we would find out, because obviously the guys do this on a Friday night and Saturday night, right? Uh, we would have found out, that's right. Uh, but in this case, it was automatic. And it saved potential a, a junior person uh, the need to go out and find out or call them. Hey, what should I do about this? It actually told them right away. That, to me, was the coolest thing, right? It's, a, it's the ability to enable a, a junior person to take action, right? than the, to consult with an expert, right? Yeah, I and, really, I well, really there's, like that. There's a business impact, too. Yeah. If I don't know what's in the database, I don't know what to build for, right? And to me, that's the most important part. Right. Yeah, one so of the most important parts. So yeah. then you're, you're reducing escalations, too. Absolutely. And you're reducing the time that's spent by the really expensive people and the extra time that's lost getting it to those people to begin with. Well, the escalation and well, the time to fix, yeah. right? Satisfaction is, is up, right? All right, that's, that's great. So. Uh, Silo meter. So I know I've heard from a lot of people that they they see similar incidents to this. What's what's going on with this? Well, actually, I didn't check this one out. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> they they checked it. It wasn't me. But if Do we expand... want to bring up some tests to, uh, or some some of the team? Well, it's well, it's bottom line, right? It's the similar yeah. the, the similar uh, organization, right? It tells you what you found, the evidence uh, that led. It to, um, uh, the, that it correlates right. uh, to lead to that conclusion, and it tells you as well, right? What is the fix? In this case, you run for a minute, um, and uh, it tells you the user. In this case, the other emitter, right? So, the, so, and and I can even look at this and figure this out. I'm a non-engineer. I'm just a data guy, and I can I can look at this. I can see that three new behaviors have happened: the first one, and the third, and the fourth, and those are all correlating over the duration of one minute 
with the severity of error messages out of the out of the the CELA meter. So that's right. The the fact that I can look at this, I don't know anything about Julio's environment, and when he tells me about it, it goes over my head because I don't I'm not I'm not like you guys. I'm not an engineer, so I can look at this and I can see a problem, and if I had to bring this to somebody and tell them what was going on and how to solve it, mm -hmm. I could do that, which is pretty amazing for a, a that's right. An average intelligence person with no engineering uh, ability like myself. You know, there's a, something that we didn't um, show in this, and you guys should talk to these guys at their booth, is you can expand on every single log. You can then say, click on it, and I want to know more. I want to know what other events that it correlate around that same period of time. You can expand on all those logs right away. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty pretty cool. And I'm, ha I'm happy to show any of you guys uh, exactly what he's talking about. We're at booth B29. Mm. Just find the worst location for a booth in the entire place, and that's us. It's yeah. at the very end of the hallway, uh, which means that you only pass by there on your way to lunch. But you can come make a special trip, see me, I'll show you this live, and we can talk about how it would apply to your environment. Um, why don't we give away a AI in a box here? Sabo, come on up. And I need a volunteer to grab the winner. Who wants to be a volunteer? Sir, in the, in the brown jacket, can you please help us find a winner for AI in a box? Close your eyes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, is that, that is actually, that is, <laughs> that's funny. Did you pick your own? That is Keo, right? Who's I don't that? know, we might have a conflict of interest here. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm gonna that's give that to you. You can so decide funny. what to do on that one. Oh, wait, it's me, guys. It's yeah. <laughs> All right, well, oh, good thing you. we have two. Sir, come back up. Try that's to pick so one that's funny. not you or your friends. <laughs> and this red card is from Richard Waterhouse. Come on up, Richard. Get your AI in a box. All right, give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. That's you. <laughs> that's so funny. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thanks a lot and come by our booth. I want to give a, a special thanks to, to Julio uh, Pleasure. To, to help describe this. Um, and I look forward to talking to all of you guys about how AI can help you find the problems that you don't know yet to look for within your OpenStack environment. So thank you, everybody, and talk to you soon.